Joining me now, John Rental, the chief political commentator at The Independent newspaper. He's also at Westminster. Well, I think we can all agree, whatever one's political colours, that it is an, an extraordinary mess. Which way, John, do you see out of it? Uh, well, if I knew that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here. I'd be down the bookies. <laughs> Uh, it's very difficult. I mean, it's, it's extraordinary to have the nation poised uh, this close to a deadline without people knowing which way it's going to go. Um, you know, the Prime Minister seemed to say something extraordinary today, which is that if she uh, doesn't get her deal through by the 30th of June, she's off and she's going to let somebody else sort it out. She said, you know, as Prime Minister, she would not uh, accept uh, a, a delay to Brexit longer than the 30th of June. Um, I don't know who that was designed to frighten, though. Maybe it was uh, designed to put pressure on Labour MPs right. who'd be horrified by the prospect of Boris Johnson succeeding her as Prime Minister. So, let's go through this at, in quick fire. Brexiteers want Brexit. They now realise that could be slipping away from them if the UK doesn't go for... Goes, if the UK goes for a longer extension. So why would they not vote for the Prime Minister? Yeah. Well, because there's a hard core of Conservative MPs, a larger number than I thought there were, of Brexiteers against Brexit. They think the Prime Minister's deal is so bad that it's better to stay in the EU uh, and fight for a what they call a clean Brexit, a true Brexit, uh, in, in the longer run. I mean, it's quite an extraordinary a puritanical position. I mean, they would rather be in the EU and pure and opposed to it than accept the compromise of the Prime Minister's deal. Right. Now, that small number could be enough to scupper her next week because if the DUP jump on board and all the other ERG yeah. uh, you're, um, jump on board, then you're really left with... I mean, she has to take everybody. And if there are some ideological... Um, uh, stronger uh, holdouts than she's done for. Well, she, for, for every ideological strong holdout, she needs a Labour MP to come across from the, uh, from the opposition to support her. Now, there are about 30 or 40 Labour MPs who have said that they think Brexit ought to happen, uh, but so far they haven't done very much about it. I mean, there's only been uh, five of them have come over and supported the Prime Minister's deal on previous votes. John, John um, do you think there may be a view in the country that somehow we think it's all going to be sorted out somehow at the last minute? Uh, you know, the, 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 so the people don't actually really believe, hand at heart, that you'd fall over the cliff because everybody thinks, well, don't worry, at the last minute they'll sort it out. I'm not sure about that. I, I come across quite a lot of people who are very frightened about the prospect of, uh, you know, disruptive, chaotic, no-deal Brexit. I mean, you know, there's talk of people stockpiling food and um, people are very worried about it. I mean, a lot of people think that their jobs and their futures may be at stake. And that's what I think is a bit irresponsible about, uh, about the way the Parliament is handling, handling it. But, you know, I don't particularly blame, blame the Prime Minister because she has to manage an impossible situation. She's got a parliament split three ways, uh, which represents the British people who are split three ways. Good to see you, sir. Thank you.